The Best of Living in Iowa is funded in part by the Gilchrist Foundation. Founded by Jocelyn Gilchrist, furthering the philanthropic interests of the Gilchrist family in wildlife and conservation, the arts and public broadcasting, and disaster relief. Funding for this program was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. Generations of families and friends who feel passionate about the programs they watch on Iowa Public Television. Hello, this is Morgan Halgren. For 16 seasons, Living in Iowa told the tale of what it means to be uniquely Iowan. Tonight, we honor that spirit by bringing you another glimpse into our rich heritage with a few stories from our archives. In this episode of The Best of Living in Iowa, we revisit our program on author Paul Engel, who ran the internationally renowned Writers' Workshop at the University of Iowa. For more than two decades, Engel attracted critically acclaimed writers, like Kurt Vonnegut, to be part of the workshop. Engel, along with his wife, Ni Hao Ling, went on to start the U of I's International Writing Program. Friday, March 22, 1991, we were saddened by the loss of one of Iowa's most precious artists. Many of us at Iowa Public Television had a long and cherished relationship with poet and poet-grower Paul Engel. So in his memory tonight, we will dedicate the entire program to reliving the times we spent with him. For those who knew Paul, we hope these reflections bring fond memories. For those who didn't know him, please allow us to share a rare individual. Paul was more than just a famous Iowan. His life was a work of art. But most of all, Paul Engel was one of us. A work of art is work, and you must keep manipulating the language until it expresses the primal feeling you want it to express. The job of the poet is to put into intense language those things in his life which move him intensely. It is not what you write about. It is not the theme of the poem, love, sorrow, pleasure. It is the motion of the language that expresses the emotion you felt. And the emotion must be controlled into a minimum of a form or will not have intensity. And therefore, it will not prove your emotion. He was born in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, soon after the turn of the century. Learning from the farm and other colorful boyhood occupations, Paul shaped his sense of reality. Though these are but memories of times past, they live on in the consciousness of his mind. In the dedication of Engel Country Memoirs, Paul recounts many of these moments. I had a lucky life. Such a way will never be lived here again. It is gone with the wild buffalo skinners and the Indian fighters, with my mother's hands whose tough calluses tore the sheets as she made my bed. Father, working hard from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., seven days a week, never made enough money in one year to pay an income tax. Nor did we feel sorry for ourselves living by a simple and ancient principle. People were put on this earth for work, horses, each other, and God in that order. Save for some shoemaker ancestors in the Black Forest of Germany, all of our families had been farmers until our father Tom began dealing first with work horses and carriage horses and finally gated saddle horses. I could put a high-spirited horse through five gates before I could drive a car. Here I am, coming out of the world of the horse, of selling newspapers on the street and delivering them to houses, of clerking in a drugstore with an old-fashioned soda fountain, all jobs done afternoon and evening, seven days a week, after a full day at school and college. 
After graduating from Coe College in his hometown, Paul Engel pursued a higher degree at the University of Iowa. There he compiled a selection of his poetry to be used in place of a thesis, possibly the first time a creative work was accepted as such. This collection, entitled Worn Earth, won the Yale series of Younger Poets Award. After a year at Columbia University, he was appointed Rhodes Scholar and went on to study in England. When I arrived at Oxford as an American Rhodes Scholar, I had a male scout, a servant, to bring breakfast and lunch to my room to make my bed, to clean and shine my shoes. The first time he took away my shoes, there was a little bit of horse manure on them. When I remembered that, I was embarrassed. And Bert brought them back, he said, with great pride and respect, Sir, I see that you have horses. He did not know that I was not a gentleman rider. I was the guy who shoveled out the stalls of a poor man's barn, and that my father kept them as a tough way of keeping his family alive. Engel's second book, American Song, was reviewed on the front page of the New York Times, July 29, 1934, and he was called a new voice in American poetry. Paul was 26. I think I was so fully in his blood that to have gone somewhere else would have, would have cut him off from his nourishment. He lived in this state, on this soil. He lived up at Stone City because it was a part of the place that he, he could see this ground. When he came back to Iowa City to live, they live over the river in a beautiful spot that keeps reminding them that this is a beautiful land. There is a spirit in us that has sprung from the nostalgic memory of the race, the feel of certain words under the tongue, the infinite features of the human face, remembrance of wind cruel cold in the bone, the songs of men and all their wailful crying, the strange thoughts of a child left all alone, a long eternity of birth and a dying. We live by no mind that is only reason, for there are in us strengths older than thought. Memory of moon, earth, seeds, the treason of spring in our hearts, old family named corn lands, eternal in us as ancestral wrought curve of our thigh and the gripped shape of hands. Paul Engel was an Iowan by birth and by belief. He never forgot the faith and dedication Iowans had in him, and he returned that gift of faith by founding the world-acclaimed Iowa Writers' Workshop. It was based on the principle of the helping hand. I had some help from people. A schoolteacher, without my knowing it, secretly sent $50 a month to Coe College to help me, and I never knew it till she had died. Um, I helped I was helped to go to England for a summer by people in Cedar Rapids who felt, well, uh, Paul's writing poetry, um, they, they write poetry in England, why doesn't he go to England? <laughs> and gradually, so many people helped me. An elderly Jewish invalid in Cedar Rapids named Gabriel Neuberger who gave me the clothes I wore when I walked into Oxford University. Well, with a background like that, you must feel, help somebody else. And so I came back to this country after three years of Europe and came to the University of Iowa and discovered there was a way. It wasn't being done, but the University of Iowa let me have enough rope. And about 90% of the people hoped I would hang myself. <laughs> you know. But enough believed. 
And so, I've helped all of these young writers I could bring here. This was the first university to state in its catalog that the thesis for an MA could be a contribution to scholarly knowledge or a piece of creative work in poetry, in fiction, in the theater, in music, in painting. And suddenly, we had the breakthrough. We had the legal justification for bringing all of the young talent of America here. There was no place else for them to go. We benefited from that. In a certain sense, he didn't bring anything to Iowa because he was born in Iowa and raised in Iowa. But he could bring very good writers, very good writers, to Iowa um, because they trusted him. He was a poet, as they were. He was a writer. He was an artist, as they were. So they trusted him. writer was the person, is still the person, for whom universities weren't really prepared. Because with a writer, it is write or die. This is an intensely emotional art. You deal with other people's emotions, you deal with your own. But if you're studying geology, it's very difficult to get emotional about worms and the glacial drift. But for the writer, it is like Kafka who said, go to your room and think hard enough of the world and it will spin in ecstasy at your feet. And the writer's job is to record the ecstasy. Well, people always remember the institutions long after they remember the people who made them possible. Uh, so people will remember Paul primarily for being a moving force on the original National Council of the Arts, uh, for creating the Writers' Workshop in, of all places, Iowa. But of course, he was an Iowan, and he knew something Iowans know, and that is, you can stay home. <laughs> he created it here. wife Waling Nia co-founded the International Writing Program. In 1975, one year before they were nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, they told us the story of the acclaimed program's conception. Waling and Paul, as co-founders of the International Writing Program, I'm going to ask a very simple question here. All I want to know is the when and the why and the how of the start of this program. You know, you, what purpose you have, what do you hope to accomplish? Easy question. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it'll take 60 minutes, but uh, easy question. Yeah. Uh, first of all, eight years ago. Second, um, because foreign writers had been coming here for many years to the writer's workshop. And third, because this foreign novelist came from um, China and said, after she'd been here, you have a program for young American writers. Why don't you have one for foreign writers? So I made the obvious reply, you're crazy. <laughs> you can't bring a lot of foreign writers in here. What will they do uh, to the campus? What will they do to each other? And uh, who will pay for all of this expensive air travel? And um, she made the uh, obvious comment. Let's try. In writing, the thing that you try to do is to show the recklessness of human life under control. And someone who says, a woman speaking to a man and saying, I have such lightness when you come. Hold my hand or I will blow right off of this wind reckless earth. 
And it's this human communication that writing's all about and the International Writing Program is all about. There's no other international writing program in the world. The only one is at Iowa City. And the result is that Iowa City is terribly well known all around the world. So people go back and write about it. There's a book in Japanese, there's a, uh, a book in Chinese. It's been written about in, uh, in German, in Finnish, and Spanish, and many other languages. So uh, we have made lifelong friends. And we're going to see a lot of them in Europe, just as we saw a lot of them in Asia. They came out to the airport to meet us always. And the airports were a long trip for them. And uh, we landed in, in um, Bucharest, Romania. There were 18 people at the airport, and one woman was being observed by the uh, airport police because she had a badge on her blouse and they couldn't figure out if she was a subversive element. The bag had a badge had a bird and it said University of Iowa Homecoming 1970. <laughs> Go Hawks! <laughs> you cannot explain homecoming. No other universities have homecomings, only American universities. <laughs> when I travel in foreign countries, uh, people come up to me and say, oh you're at Iowa, that's where Paul Engel was, uh, that's where the Writers' Workshop is located. It's a program that gives us instant visibility all across the world. Uh, not only because the Writers Workshop itself was built into the premier program in this country, but because the international writing program has attracted writers from all over the world. Have you often wondered about what rewards you've missed out on by virtue of not being able to devote more time to your writing and being a better writer? The shelf of my books would be much longer. And uh, I've helped an enormous number of people write their books mm -hmm. when I would really like to have done my own. But that was fascinating too. And. Um, some of the poets I taught have since won the Pulitzer Prize, the National Book Award, the Yale series of younger poets. More of my poetry students have won the Yale series of younger poets than have students at Yale. Hmm. When I go to New Haven, I say this softly. <laughs> you know? But uh, it's a satisfaction to, 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 to have been involved with uh, genuine big talent. Mm -hmm. um, as to myself, I, I'm doing these two books. One is called Ingle Country Poems, it's about done, and uh, Ingle Country Memoirs about my misspent life. <laughs> and uh, my great-grandfather was the first man ever to put a plow in certain fields. Uh, the grass roots were so deep it took 12 oxen to pull the plow through those roots. And um, I lived on a farm in South Germany once, and I learned to drive oxen. I gave them commands in German, and uh, I suddenly felt, my God, great-grandfather's back <laughs> driving oxen. <laughs> and I'll read a little bit of this. It's called Heartland. Great-grandfather Peter Reinheimer broke our piece of Iowa prairie, the first man from the world's beginning to tear that gold green grass apart. In hollow places, it grew tall as a horse. Yelling at 12 yoked oxen bent to a sod busting plow. Great grandmother gardened, baked, bore kids, slopped hogs, picked corn, fed Indians, seldom cried. Her spirit smooth as a hickory ax handle. From such a mother, such a father, I was born. In red leaf, dazzling autumn, trees on fire. In a little Iowa bedroom in our house. Mountain to mountain, rich fields roll, ocean of soil above an ocean of stone. Limestone beds that were once a seabed, full of old fossils making a sweet dirt. Feeding far countries that have never seen it, this land rolls onward with the rolling world, a place of trust in a time not to be trusted.
In 1990, Engel received the award for Distinguished Service to the Arts, thus becoming one of only 30 Americans so honored by the American Academy and Institute of Arts and Letters. Engel's contributions to the arts include the lyrics to an opera, Golden Child, which was broadcast as a Hallmark Hall of Fame Christmas special on NBC in 1960. Thirty years later, he was combining his talents with those of his daughter, dancer La Lan King. This was documented in our final program with Paul in May of 1990. And th this is a wonderful thing for me to have as a, as a record of our life together. Also, I found that the motion of dance is very much like the motion of a line in a poem. They're both arts of grace and rhythm. So that it was a natural combination. And when I read uh, the poem, which he choreographed, I, I try to make certain of the lines almost like a person moving, not just words moving, but like a dancer moving. Pity the poor furred cat who needs four feet to do such leaps across the floor as dancer does with two. Dance poem two. Pity the poor snow that only drifts. Envy the lucky dancer when she lifts an arm that circles up, down, left, and right. Like snow, she turns the colorless air to light. Dance poem three. Her life is moving through unmoving air by a hard discipline and a light chance. Watch in wonder as her lifting arms open a window to her house of dance. I think the overall effect of uh, Paul having been here is to have uh, made Iowa City the narrative capital of the world. I mean, this is the place where writing, poetry, and fiction um, is center. And this is a place that is synonymous with writing. When one says Iowa, one thinks writing. Uh, for one person to have been able to do something like that is, is, is extraordinary. And uh, this is why we honor him. The name Paul Engel trembles on his tongue. Should it be bellowed, sneered, whined, bleated, sung? Look at his broken football crooked nose, his shifty way of letting his eyes close when they look into your own eyes. Too grim. How could you buy an old used car from him? Yet, as a father, what he gave was love. Yet, as a husband, what he gave was love. At 70, beat up, jailed for the crime of beating horror, beauty into rhyme, I walked the blacked out cell block of my brain. Sure I am mad, but sure that I am sane. A cornfield kid, crazy for English words. Old scarecrow lonesome for the screaming birds. That's good. Our final thoughts tonight come in the form of questions. Are there talents as great as Paul's in the new generation of artists and writers in Iowa? 
If so, are there people like Paul's school teacher who will silently give of themselves in the name of nourishing that talent? Do we as Iowans value the arts enough to foster and encourage artists in our own backyards? If so, let us find and nurture them in Paul's memory and for our own good. Until next week, remember, if you're living in Iowa, you can be proud and thankful that Paul Engel was one of us. What would be your idea of how to spend a perfect evening? What would it be to you? One evening only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are allowed only one evening. <laughs> this is the last <laughs> evening of my life? <laughs> Not necessarily. What would be a perfect oh. evening of, in your life? <laughs> I would like some fresh ocean fish cooked in the Chinese manner to begin the evening. Mm -hmm. I would like some, uh, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> pea pods, bean sprouts, and uh, cook the way she cooks them. Then he wash dishes. <clears throat> that's what I hope. Mm -hmm. uh, that's her hope. <laughs> it is my evening, it's not my hope. Then that will be a perfect <laughs> evening for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> and then we talk a little, as we do every night, about uh, what's happened during the day and what we're going to do next day. And then she goes to her study and I go to mine in our house mm -hmm. and I write something better than I've ever written before and so does she and the evening ends by my showing her that I did write something better than I've ever written before. And she tells me she wrote something better than ever before, but it's in Chinese and I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> The Best of Living in Iowa is funded in part by the Gilchrist Foundation. Founded by Jocelyn Gilchrist, furthering the philanthropic interests of the Gilchrist family in wildlife and conservation, the arts and public broadcasting, and disaster relief. Funding for this program was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. Generations of families and friends who feel passionate about the programs they watch on Iowa Public Television.